What's up, people? This week we're talking about facial anatomy, danger zones in the face, and particularly the arteries. Alright, most of the facial arteries uh, branch off from the major carotid artery, so let's start from there. If you want to find that the trick that I use is just corner of the eye, bring your two fingers all the way down, find your pulse. Once you have that, you know that you know this major carotid artery branches off into two sections: your external carotid, which is right in front of your ear, and also your your facial artery. And that facial artery, if you want to find it, clench your jaw like this. That's your that's your masseter right here. Right in front of it, you can find a little notch, and the artery usually comes out of here and goes just one centimeter, one finger breadth lateral of this, it's called the oral commissure here. Why that's important is because if you're gonna be doing some type of filler on the jaw, you know you don't wanna go too deep because this artery here runs deep. So when you're looking at the external carotid artery here, one thing you can do to protect yourself is just measure one centimeter medial of the ear. So let's focus on the facial artery here. We know that it runs deep here, and it comes up to the side of the mouth, and when it gets to the side of the mouth, it's one centimeter beyond the oral commissure, so, or one finger breath basically, right here. If you wanna be safe, and you're gonna inject around there, you wanna be within or beyond. At this point, it's gonna branch off into two sections. It's gonna be going into your inferior labial artery, and your superior labial artery. What we know about those is those go really deep. How deep? Well, if you're looking at your lips here, there's a, a dry and wet border. And that means right here you can feel it's dry. And then if you flip it up a little bit, there's gonna be a wet part right here. That's where those arteries run along. So when we're injecting the lips, we don't wanna go deeper than the dry border and we're protected. Okay, now let's keep going with the facial artery. This thing actually runs right along this nasolabial fold and it's very superficial. Most providers didn't know this even five, six years ago. Injecting deep, injecting superficially, injecting however they want, they're just nailing this thing and it was extremely dangerous. Some people really do need to have an injection here. So what you need to do is you need to inject very superficially, a very light beating just along this nasolabial fold, massage it in a little bit and you should be okay. But anything other than going very superficially, you're playing with fire. So another way to avoid hitting this facial artery is to not inject parallel with it. Uh, if you actually go deeper, because we know that it runs superficially, if you go deeper on a perpendicular angle and using a fanning technique, where you're just giving little doses here, almost in a, an anti-grade and a retrograde fashion, which means you're injecting as you're going in and injecting as you're pulling out, then you can massage it in and it gives you a better chance of not injecting directly into the artery. Because you're moving that needle the whole time, you're really protecting yourself and the patient. Now, the last thing about the lower face that's good to know about this facial artery uh, and this external carotid artery is that they're both external arteries, which means that they're not coming within, you know, they can't go to the eye. Worst case scenario, absolutely, you could occlude the artery and you can have some complications with that. Uh, but as long as you're protected, such as hyaluronic days, warm compresses, maybe giving some aspirin, massage, uh, if you're acting quick enough, you won't have any concerns. All right, so now that we have this facial artery that's come to the corner of the nose, we know that it lies superficially here. This area of the face is called the A-line. Once it hits here, it changes direction, goes up the nose, and it's now officially called the angular artery. So the angular artery goes right to the corner of the eye. On its way there, it branches off to something called the lateral nasal artery. This is really interesting because these are still, in theory, all external arteries. However, they connect with another artery that comes from within the uh, orbit of the eye. And this artery is an internal artery. And this is called the dorsal nasal artery and branches and connects with the angular artery. Now, why this is important is because even though you're injecting into an external artery here, because it connects with the internal artery, if you put too much pressure with your plunger and you inject directly into this artery, you can actually cause a retrograde injection connecting to the dorsal nasal artery 
going back into the eye and you could be in big trouble. You can actually call it blindness. It's super rare, you just need to know about it. What's important with these arteries along the nose is that most of them run very superficially and usually along the side of the nose. So you have your dorsal nasal artery and your lateral nasal artery that kind of runs right along this tip of the nose here. But right in the middle, there's not much going on. And if there is, it's very superficial. So anybody who usually does any type of injections into the nose, A, needs to be very qualified, and B, needs to know their anatomy really well, and they need to go deep. They need to go deep here and here, and that can strain out the nose. Next artery is your infraorbital artery. This one's right here. The way to find it is look straight, take the inside of your iris, which is the colored part of your eye, and go straight down. Find this ridge here, which is called the orbital rim, and go down 11 millimeters just beyond a centimeter. And that right there is going to be your infraorbital artery. Happens every time. This one comes out of a bone, but it's actually an external artery. A lot of people assume that this artery, because it's coming out, is an internal artery and connects right to the eye. It doesn't. It actually comes from the branch of the external carotid artery. Goes inside the bone and comes back out. Now there's two ways to avoid hitting that. A, if you're gonna be going inside of the pupil, then you wanna make sure that you're not going too deep and you're probably gonna be a little higher. The other way is just to make sure you go lateral of the mid pupil layer line. At that point, you should be okay. It's a pretty safe zone around here. So a lot of people, as long as they're injecting around here, they're good. The only place you don't wanna be is deep right around here and you'll avoid hitting anything major. Now who here has heard of the transverse facial artery? Now to get to this artery, our carotid artery here, once it gets to this bone, the zygomatic bone, it now becomes the superficial temporal artery. But before it gets there, it branches off this way. And this is your transverse facial artery. And the way to avoid hitting that is making sure that you're staying on the bone because this artery comes just underneath the bone. So if you're sliding off the bone when you're injecting, you're gonna get some issues. Stay on the bone and stay perpendicular and you'll be gold. All right, so now that we know that at the zygomatic bone here, this artery branches off into something called the superficial temporal artery. What do we need to know? We need to know that it's superficial. So if we're gonna be injecting anywhere, it has to be deep. How do we find the sweet spots? There are two sweet spots here. This is the temporal fusion line. So if you look at your forehead here and you find this little notch or this ridge here, these are your temporal fusion lines. Go to the orbital rim, go one centimeter up, one centimeter lateral. Bam, that's your sweet spot. Inject deep to the bone, inject a bolus and massage it in. The other way you can do it is at the corner of the eye or the lateral canthus, two centimeters lateral, one centimeter up. Boom, same place. Sweet spot, inject deep, same thing, massage it in. This artery now branches off into something called the frontal branch and connects to two really important arteries. And they're called the supraorbital artery and supratrochlear artery. The way to find these are the supraorbital artery, you can find a little ridge here, it's the supraorbital notch. Once you find that notch, you know the artery is coming right out of there. And it branches off and connects with the frontal branch. So when we inject, we wanna make sure that we're not staying anywhere near here. And actually this zone here is usually a no-go for anybody to do fillers nowadays because it's way too high risk. I mean, you've got a major artery here, you've got a major artery here, you've got your dorsal artery here, and they all connect to the eye. So unless you wanna make someone go blind, um, I would avoid injecting fillers here. Some people still do it, but I'm telling you, they're going in blind and they're crossing their fingers. All right, now the trick to find the supertrochlear artery it's pretty easy. When you frown, I've got some Botox here, so I'm gonna have to do my own frowning here. When I frown, when people have these 11 lines here, whatever ridge is made right here, that's exactly, per one millimeter, exact place where the supertrochlear artery comes out of. So when you're injecting, don't inject there and you're golden. This frontal branch, this is all deep as well. So if you do need to do fillers on the forehead, the way to avoid causing any issues is going superficially 
with serial puncture allotments. Do that, massage it in. All right, we get the gist of it, right? I was running out of ink actually at the top and scratching myself more than anything, but uh, yeah, you understand. Listen, find yourself a qualified injector, make sure they have an advanced course in anatomy, make sure they have a good understanding of where the safety and danger zones are, and you'll be good. So thanks for stopping in guys. Hopefully you learned a few things. I'm Dan signing off, and I'm pretty sure I'm still terrible at guitar. Let's check it out. Yeah.